you know. So I would not discourage anybody at all in coming. I don't see what is hard about abroad life. When they say abroad is, is difficult, I do not believe and I do not agree with that and I'll never do. Life abroad and life of a YouTuber and life of a nurse is not an easy one. And I have been juggling both for a long time now. I've been combining career, family, YouTubing, content creation, businesses, and everything. And most content creators can relate. So today, I have with me a fellow content creator who also combines nursing, life abroad, family, and YouTubing. So we're just going to sit down, chit chat, and talk about how life has been as a content creator and the up and downs, the good side, the bad sides, life as an immigrant, life as a mother, life as a nurse, and many more. This is not to discourage you. My name is Mr. Kuma, registered nurse, come from Ghana, and my guest today also comes from Ghana. And we're gonna talk about all this, share this video with others, be motivated, do not be discouraged, and pursue that American or Western dream of yours that you want to live. I'm coming live to you from New York State of America, and she is in UK. And today we have Dinah, her YouTube ch channel name is Good Health Consult. And yes. as I said, she's a YouTuber, go subscribe to her channel. She has wonderful stuff yes. there. If you want to know about life abroad, how to work in UK, she has all the information for you. Thank you very much, Diana, for joining us today from UK. I know there's a big time difference. It's early yeah. here, it's the afternoon there, but let's get yeah. this done. Yeah, thank you so much, Priscilla, for having me. It's nice to see you again. So my name is Diana. I'm an overseas. Uh, registered nurse. I migrated from Ghana mm -hmm. and currently practicing in the UK. So I've been here for almost four years now. So the journey has not really been um, easy, but then it's been okay. So if you want to become a registered nurse, obviously I had to go through the writing the IELTS, writing the CBT. I came down here, wrote the OSCE, which is the practical lessons, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. I started practicing. So that is the process and that is what I went through in order to become a registered nurse here. So I'm currently working as a registered nurse in one of the big hospitals here in London. So, so far the journey has been okay. And I've also got a YouTube channel. I've got wonderful content about how you can successfully migrate to the UK. I've shared all the tips, all the job opportunities. So if you are not on the channel, kindly check my channel out and subscribe and you would find it very very useful four years ago what informed your decision to travel abroad because four years back the wave the travel wave was not on like how it is today it was it was quite different honestly what motivated me to come back was because i'd lived here before this is not the first time i'm coming to live in the uk this is more like my second time so i've lived here before i've studied here so after the program of study um there was no post-study work visa as they have currently so there was no opportunity for us to even explore job opportunities at all. We had to go back, I mean, right after uh, our program. So uh, when I went back, you know how the system is like. And I mean, having had a taste of how UK was, I felt like, let me see what other opportunities are there and how I can uh, build up my career and move my career uh, fair and see what other uh, areas I could explore in the field of nursing. So that was actually actually what motivated me to like come back and see how the system is like you know have a feel of how it is like to live and work here and what then was there was still IELTS there was CBT and then the OSCE but then the recruitment process and everything was much easier now it's more challenging because yeah you would all you needed back then was to just write your IELTS your CBT and then just contact agencies they would rather Back then, the agencies were rather sending you emails, bombarding you with phone calls. Uh, I mean, doing everything they can to help you come here. But now, it's totally different. So when I did my CBT and my IELTS, all I needed was to just send an email with my CV to an agency in the UK. And that was it. They had to do everything. They took me through the entire process until I, I finally got here. They booked my tickets. They paid the visa fee, flight and everything. And I was given... Uh, three three months accommodation 
by my hospital whilst I prepared for the OSCE. But now it's a bit different because of this uh, WHO policy. Once you are done with your IELTS and CBT, because of this red list, amber list thing going on, you have to apply directly to the trust or to the hospitals or to the nursing home. So now it's become more challenging. But luckily for us back then, it was quite easy. So I would say that me coming here was quite easy. And so far, the, I mean, nursing itself is not easy everywhere, but so far it's been good. Where did you start working? Which kind of environment? Is there a nursing home? Is there a hospital? And are you still at the same facility? Okay, so I, when I came here initially, I was working in an NHS hospital, which is more like what we would say in Ghana, a Ghana Health Service. So it's more like working for a hospital that's for the government or fully sponsored by the government. Yeah, so I was working in an acute gastro unit. Before I came here, I knew which department I was going to be working in. I knew it was going to be a medical department, but I didn't know exactly which ward until I got here. Because once you get here, you need to do the practical training to get the pin. So we got to know where we're going to actually work after we got the pin. Yeah, so I've been working in a gastro medical ward until I just uh, got fed up for some reasons. And the, the, the environment, there was something that was not really making me happy in the environment I was finding myself in. So I just had to make the move. And then I moved on to a surgical department. I was really enjoying the surgical department until the COVID came in, the pandemic came in, and my unit was shut down completely. So we were all dispersed, and I ended up in the intensive care unit. I've never worked in an intensive care unit. So during the pandemic, it was the most challenging uh, part of my my nursing career here in the UK, working in an intensive care unit, wearing full PPE from head to toe. I had no idea what it is. Like even in Ghana, I never worked in an emergency, not to even talk of intensive care unit. So it was quite challenging. And then when the pandemic went down, they didn't need us in the intensive care unit anymore. So I just told myself, enough of the moving around. Let me just focus. I, I just got fed up with the bedside nursing, actually, for my experience of being moved around during the pandemic and the challenges I went through. I just left the bedside. So currently, from the gastro-medical ward I was working in, moved to the surgical ward during the pandemic, I was moved to the intensive care unit. Further moved on to a rehabilitation unit for COVID patients. I just decided I just need to follow my own path. I'm just leaving the best side for now. So I'm currently working as a vaccination nurse with one of the hospitals in London. And the vaccination nurse is a job that came with a sponsor. So most people do not know that there are bedside jobs. There are jobs that are not bedside and you can actually go get sponsorship for. I did a video uh, in which I talked about um, non bedside nursing jobs with the sponsorship here in the UK. So you can check that out. I'm working as a vaccination nurse. It has nothing to do with bedside. I don't have direct contact with patients. And I'm very, very, very happy so far. It's so far the easiest job I've ever done. And I'm very, very happy. So that's where I am now currently in the nursing career here in the UK. Wow. Yeah. Quite an intense nursing yeah. career working on all these units. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't be easy. <laughs> I always say that if you follow your path, whatever mm. You happy? You don't mm. necessarily have to work at bedside to be called a nurse. No, no. There are so many opportunities here that people are not aware of. Yeah, it's it's very true. So when you travel, you need to explore and explore. and ask around. There are mm -hmm. so many ways to ease your stress. Yeah. I was in a similar situation, and I made a change, and that change has been a blessing to me. And I'm yeah. So I can relate to what you just mm. said. Mm. You don't necessarily have to be in the hospital to be a nurse. Yeah. If the hospital is for you, fine. If it's not for you, you need to get out. Yeah, yeah. You have peace of mind. Okay. So, there are so many of us as nurses who watch you and watch us. Yeah. And they want to come work abroad. Yeah. They hear, like, we hear us saying life abroad is so hard and this and that. Yeah. And they feel like we are exaggerating or we are yeah. discouraging them. In mm -hmm. general, what do you make of life abroad? So, I mean, it all depends on where you're coming from. So if I compare my life here and my career in general mm -hmm. uh, to how it was back home, I would say that the opportunities are here. The money is here. If you compare the money to back home, what we were getting as recent as, I mean, it's not even comparable. It's not even something to think of at all. So financially, it is rewarding. Although UK is not one of the countries where their salaries are high, 
you know, compared to some other countries. But then it's no better compared to where I'm coming from. I can only speak from where I'm coming from. So salary wise, you, it's okay. It's okay. No matter how much you spend, whatever is left is still even more or three times more than my salary as a nursing officer back home. So it's not that bad. I know other countries pay, I mean, higher than UK, but then it's still not bad over here. So that is in terms of finances. And when it comes to the nursing job itself, it, honestly, you can't even make that comparison. That is what I can say. Because back home, I was not working in a big hospital. I was working in a district hospital. So we were not even seeing some of the equipment that we are seeing over here. Not at all. I can't even compare. If not for this country, I wouldn't have even known that there's anything called an infusion pump. I only saw it for the first time and operated it for the first time here. So there, well, I mean, I, again, regarding the career-wise, there are so many uh, branches of um, nursing you could go into. Yeah, I never knew I would want to become a vaccination nurse. It is not something you can even push for in Ghana. It's not like that specialty. But over here, they've got so many specialties. They've got um, renal nursing, those who look after people with uh, urinary problems. We've got oncology nursing, those who look after cancer patients. We've got orthopedic nurses. We've got a, a lot of specialties that you could actually branch into if you have the if if you have the courage enough to explore. But I mean, if you are a bit limited where you're coming from, you can't even explore those. You would not you never you never know that you even have the capacity or even the strength to even do it until you get the opportunity. So I think with, with regards to the um, or, or the career, the opportunities are here. And then when it comes to like life in general, um, I would say that over here, when it comes to the social life, Ghana is much better than the UK. I speak that uh, for myself. That's because I don't have my family here. I'm here without my family. So it can be a bit difficult, especially when you just come home from work and it's like you don't have any family to talk to. But in Ghana, everybody's everybody's friend. Here you could be living in the... Uh, a shared apartment with people but then you never really get to talk to them they only see you hi and then that's it so you never really get to talk to anybody so it's like your friend it's your phone your your, your computer your tv your laptop not unless you are talking to them back home otherwise the social life and everything it's i mean ghana it's i mean much better because you see people even here even when it gets to winter it's even worse because by 4 p.m it's dark everywhere you can't even see anybody it's so dark, everybody is wearing their hood, their jacket. So, I mean, that aspect, I would say Ghana is much better. But then you can still live here and still feel good and feel comfortable with or without your family. If you've got the money, you can go anywhere you want to get the life that you want. Yeah, so I think all in all, it's, it's, it's a bit of a balance and it all depends on you as the individual. Most people want to embark on this journey and yeah. they don't know where to start from and when they start they listen to people and get distracted mm -hmm. so yeah some of us start the process we make mistakes on the way and we mm -hmm. give up. what advice or tips do you have for us those who are back home and want to work abroad what tips do you have for them so if you want to come to the uk to work i will not discourage you at all so although the work over here i will say is a bit it can be very very uh challenging because um over here like people are monitoring you right you have to be very very careful with everything that you do mm. that is not to scare you but then actually nursing is like you taking care of people so that is how it has to be anyway but back home the system is a bit more relaxed but here you will not have it easy you, you need to be on top of your game when it comes to work if it's time for you to go for your breakfast if it's 15 minutes where you have to come back after 15 minutes so but then you have the gadgets to work with You've got doctors 24 7 depending on which area you're working in so there is always that support there is always the supplies the equipment for you to work with so it makes you like it makes you feel good but despite all of these challenges i mean it makes you go home and you feel like you've really really worked and whatever money you get at the end of the day you feel like you've worked for the money back home in ghana we don't have the equipment we, the systems are not really there and the money is not even good so after all the stress and all the improvising that we do at the end of the month you see you, you don't really see the effort you, you don't see the fruit of the efforts you've put in you know so i would not discourage anybody at all in coming 
I don't see what is hard about abroad life. When they say abroad is, is difficult, I do not believe and I do not agree with that and I'll never do. Mm -hmm. I live here, I live comfortably. I've got, if you come here the right way, you will not have any problem whatsoever. If you come legally as a registered nurse, there is no way you would have to travel, struggle at all. You've got your documents, your visa, your, your, your work visa. So there's nothing strange or nothing difficult about work or life abroad. So if you are in for it, I will tell you to go in for it. All you need to do is study hard to get your IELTS. And that is what most people find it challenging. Thank God the UK NMC is trying to relax the rules. When I was writing my IELTS back then, you had to get seven across board. Seven in reading, speaking, and all of those four models. Now they've relaxed it. It's seven in three models and 6.5 in writing. So that gave a lot of people opportunity. Now they've, 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 uh, they are trying to introduce this um, uh, employment reference whereby you can get a letter from your employer. That <clears throat> shows that or oh, you communicate well in English and all that. That, unfortunately, is not applicable to those back home. But it's still helping those of us from overseas who are stuck here. Some people are overseas. Are, some people have migrated from overseas to come into the UK. But because they are still struggling with the IELTS, they are working as healthcare assistants and all of that. But now... The employment reference is going to benefit those people. So th they are still making a few changes. And now, another thing is, I made a video about this UK NMC new announcement for the English language proficiency. You can go onto my channel and have a look. One thing that will benefit um, people back home regarding the IELTS is uh, you can combine two results. Initially, it was just six months interval between the first and second, but now it's 12 months. So it gives you more time to prepare. So that is a, like a good thing to, to actually motivate somebody who has that, that, the, um, the dream of migrating. Once you're done with this IELTS, the CBT is missed, which is also easy to pass. So I would mm -hmm. encourage you, there are so many Facebook groups for CBT you can join. There are so many uh, Facebook groups for IELTS you can join and then share study materials. If there's any question you don't understand, just put it on the Facebook group and definitely you get an answer. That was what I did when I was studying my CBT. So I encourage every one of you who are aspiring to come here to do that. And definitely the, the, the CBT is quite easy compared to the English exams because it's basic lessons. So once you are able to apply your basic lessons, so you should be able to make it. Then the next thing is the job search. Because WHO brought up this policy of people not using agencies anymore, it is becoming difficult. But when it comes to the job search, there is still a lot more people who have done their own direct application without using agencies as they want us not to do, but they mm -hmm. money to get jobs sum of money to get jobs directly with the NHS, which is the uh, government, let me see, government hospitals, sum of also money to get employment directly from overseas with care home. So when it comes to the job search, this is where most people are finding it a bit challenging because initially, like I mentioned before, uh, when, when you needed to come to the UK, all you needed was to just write to IELTS and CBT and get an agency and they would take you through the entire process. Now, WHO has brought up this policy and Ghana has been classified as countries uh, under the red list. So they don't want agencies to be recruiting anymore. So if you if, if you finish with your IELTS and CBT, you just need to apply directly to the employers or the recruiters. So now that is where most people are actually find it very challenging because I get a lot of emails, people sending me their CVs to get them jobs and all of that or to help them get jobs. So what you need to do is to just push and push and push. You have to apply to as many jobs as possible. There is, if you go to trackjobs.com or nhsjobs.com, you find all the vacancies. Try and look out for the ones that are offering sponsorship for international applicants. Not every band five job you see on track jobs or NHS or indeed is for overseas. Some of them will state um, specifically we are not offering sponsorship for overseas. So do not apply for those ones. Look for the ones that are offering the two sponsors. Those are the ones that you qualify for. And also writing a good supporting statement. Back home, when, when you are done with your uh, your nursing training, the government will just post you. So we are not used to writing application letter. We are not used to writing supporting statement. But here in UK, there is something called supporting statement. So that is what you back your application with. And so you have to put in all the experience you've got. Do not say that I have what it takes. To become right whatever skills you think you have that makes you the right candidate spell it all out in the supporting statement and do apply to as many as possible do not limit now because of this red list unbalance do not limit yourself to nhs hospitals alone try and then broaden 
your opportunities by applying to some care homes or nursing homes as well. Because if you limit yourself, so most people want to actually work for the NHS and not to work for the private or the care homes. But now, because the, the opportunity is already limited, I would advise you to just try and then just get yourself into the country. Because even if it's a care home, I mean, just let yourself here first. If you come, there are so many opportunities that you can explore and you can always move, switch business and all of that. So that is what I would say to anybody who is aspiring to come here. You will not regret, although the work is not easy. It's not, it's not, it's not easy, I'm telling you. But then, at least at the end of the month, you see something that will make you think, at least you've gotten something for the work you've done. Yeah, so I will still encourage anyone who wishes to embark on this journey. So last but not mm. have a YouTube channel. What informed the decision to start creating content for nurses? Or why did you start a YouTube channel in the first place? <laughs> so honestly, you know, I work like three days in a week, right? So sometimes I ask myself, after I've worked for these three days, I've got four days, you know, like because you do 12 hours. Yeah. So 12 hours, you do three days in a week, and then once in a month, you do four days. Mm -hmm. So there is more like a lot of free days. And mm -hmm. sometimes you just don't even know what to do. If you don't want to do overtime, I mean, sometimes I'm always tired even after the three days. So I don't always bother going to do overtime. Yeah. But um, if you. Once you are done with your three days, you don't really know what to do with the rest of the, the, the days in the week. So that was what made me like, I mean, once I've gone through this process, a lot of people ask me several questions. People send me their CVs to get them jobs. So why don't I just spell all the information out to people? Hopefully, it will not only reach out to just that one person who asks the question, but to thousands of people. So that is what I do basically when I'm not working. So... I mean, combining that with um, work, it, it's not really challenging for me because I don't work five days a week or seven days. I don't work throughout the week. I only work three days in a week. And then once in the month, I do four days. So it's like I've got free time. And if I want to do it, I can really do it. Yeah. So it hasn't really been challenging at all. Not really. So it's just to get a lot of information across. And I saw this job opportunity that was being advertised. I made a video about it. And a lady from Malawi sent me a message that he applied for that job and got it. I was so excited. So, I mean, it's just a way of also impacting knowledge on people. I did a video about some of the sample questions that uh, most uh, interviewers ask for senior carer jobs. Somebody sent me a message yesterday that he's going for the interview. That video has been very helpful and he's going to uh, apply all the knowledge. So, it kind of gives you some kind of uh, happiness, some Anytime I just do them, it just makes me excited. It keeps me busy. It keeps me occupied. It keeps me engaged, actually. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what I'll be doing with most of the free time I have. Yeah. Changing lives in a little kindness without knowing. Step I know. Who, in my I know. <laughs> who have gotten job offers have shared on my mm -hmm. yeah. Telegram group and they can't tell me. And yeah. We are impacting lives and God bless every content creator out there. Anybody yeah. who has something from a distance yeah. change all this life without knowing. Mm -hmm. Just don't give up. Let me let yeah. you know you're impacting life. You're changing uh -huh. life. So you've heard it from Diana. Mm. She said, do not be discouraged. Not if at you all. Want to give up. Do not listen to people. If you want to work in UK, go through the right, right process. Do the application. Uh -huh. It's totally worth it. I mm. always say, far better than where you are. Mm. You, you work in Malawi, Zimbabwe, Ghana, Nigeria, yeah. Tanzania, Morocco, wherever. The pay in UK, even though you hear UK is yeah. way yeah. better than the pay where you yeah, are. Exactly. In Africa. <laughs> so thank you very much, Dana, for your time. Any last words before I let you go? Okay, so I'm so happy to even be on Priceless Channel. So the last word I will say is if you've not followed Priceless Channel, if you've got the dream of migrating to the US, she is also the boss of US. Please follow her channel, Prisla Kuma RN. And if you need any guidance on your paperwork, your evaluation, just follow Priceless Channel. And please follow my channel as well. All the content on there has been very, very helpful to other people. And also, once you manage to go through successfully and get your, your feet in the UK, do not limit yourself to where you are alone. That was what I realized that my one, one big challenge for me was like the lack of confidence. Because... I was not trained here, I was not born here, and all of that. So sometimes having the confidence to face them, even, I mean, confront challenges, I mean, it was quite difficult.
So that was even one of the reasons why I kind of met my my first place of work. But then as you move along, you get the confidence and then it also opens other doors for you. You get to meet people. They, t- they, they like kind of hold your hand and show you where there are other places you could um, get some opportunity. So do not limit yourself to where you want, you are working if you want to go. Try, even if it's the same hospital, try and do overtime in other uh, wards. It will expose you because over here in UK, we, it's not like med surge. We've got renal ward, orthopedic ward, surgical ward, medical ward, pediatric ward. So you can explore so many other areas within even your own hospital. The moment as you do that, it will open up, it will give you, the, uh, it will at least build up some interest in you to actually push further into some special areas that you never know you could even do. And I hope to see you in UK soon. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can relate to what you said. Within my own hospital, I floated to other wards, floors, mm. you may call mm. it. Um, you, it's entirely different. The setup is different. The patient mm. population is different. And it will inform your decision that, oh, maybe I want to specialize in neuro. I want to specialize in renal. Exactly. It's good to explore even the hospital, mm. the floors on your hospital. And it really, really helped me when I did that. Yeah. I challenged yeah. myself. It was very scary at first. Mm. But I challenged myself. I went to the unknown environment and I did that. Those of you who have interest in travel nursing, you're going to be thrown in an env- unknown environment. So you can use your floor, your hospital, the ward to practice. Mm-hmm. Into yeah. other wards to practice so that when you finally become that agency nurse or that travel nurse, as America would call it, you have a exposure of going to an unknown environment where you don't know the staff, you don't know the patients. Your job is just go there and get work done. Yeah. And in case you do not know, I have a consult. We help general nurses midwives, psychiatry nurses who want to work in the U.S. We do not help nursing assistants. If you see a nursing assistant video on my channel, please and please again, it's an opportunity I'm sharing with you. I don't know the facility that is offering that job. I do not work with them. I was not paid to do any advertisement for them. I just shared with you to go and apply. My inbox has been bombarded with Give me the CNA job now. Give me the CNA job now. I do not offer a CNA job. I do not offer a nursing job. We don't recruit nurses. We don't recruit CNAs. We offer women if you want to write NCLEX, USA licensure. We do paperwork for you to write exams. Then we find you recruiters who will find you jobs. USRM Pathway Consult is the consultant. I'm the lead, lead consultant. And we groom nurses three categories of nurses only general nurses psychiatry nurses midwives no public health no community no cna only three categories i'm saying this emphatically because my inbox is full all my emails my everywhere is full cnas please we do not offer jobs for you nurses we do not offer jobs we groom you to write NCLEX to pass find recruiters for you and get you to america Thank you very much, Diana, for your time. I do not want to bore you with my advert and my strength disclaimer. Thank you, and I hope to be back on your channel. If you haven't watched the interview I did with Diana on her channel, go to her channel, scroll down, couple videos back, you'll find me there, and yeah. share our content, subscribe to our channel. We are doing this to help you. So share yeah. this with others when you get the information. Don't be on the phone alone. Thank you, and until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.